all of this stuff. But I'm going to get into the very first question. I always meant to kind of break the ice a little bit. Um, what are you drinking? What's your favorite drink? Well, this is not my favorite drink, but I'm drinking a peach sparkling water. <laughs> okay, so what's what would you say is your favorite right now, though, as well? Well, ironically, it's also my best friend, tequila. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Just there you kidding. go. What's your favorite tequila? <laughs> I, have, I have to, like, specifics. What's the favorite tequila now? Because I'm a tequila guy uh, as well. I like Casamigos Blanco right yes. now. That's, that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, I'm, a, I'm um, a, but, definitely a Patron guy, I think. I love me some Patron. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Honestly, my favorite drink is probably coffee. <laughs> so I was, I just did an interview the other day where we were talking about coffee for, for like three or four minutes. And my whole yeah. life, I never drank coffee until like the last two or three years. And now I can't live without it. Like, I love coffee yeah. so much. Um, I know. Yeah. I, it's a social thing, too. Uh, but as far as like in the afternoons, if I want to wind down, I'll have a, um, a ranch water. I love those. Uh, the only canned ranch water that I drink that I actually like is the four sixes. Okay. Um, so that's my, my favorite. They have a, a mango habanero ranch mm. water, and that's my absolute favorite. They also have a prickly pear. So those two are my go-to and they're not strong in alcohol i'm not a big drinker so <laughs> you know just it's, one or two i would say that it's probably well i mean with drinking in stage performances it's kind of um hit or miss a lot of people can't do it without it and a lot of people can't do it with it so i, I definitely right. see where that comes from um and man we're really excited to have you on the show pauline thank you for your time and i'm i'm so stoked that this is finally happening because i'm a huge fan of yours have been for a long long time so Again, thank you for your time and and um and getting this set up and and being patient and all of that stuff. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. And we can't actually tell people how long you've been a fan because then they'll figure out my age. No, we're not so. going to do that because they might figure out my age too. And <laughs> no, so <laughs> we are actually. I'm sitting right now in East Texas in your neck of the woods when you were a wee mm -hmm. child. Um, you grew up in Pittsburgh, Texas, which not a whole lot of people outside of East Texas have heard of. Hell, in East Texas, not a lot of people have heard of Pittsburgh. But um, what do right. you remember about growing up? Because it was like before you were 10, right? You were real little. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Mount Pleasant, and then my parents moved to Pittsburgh, Texas, just when I was three. Uh, but, I mean, it was a wonderful way to grow up. We lived way out in the country. We had four neighbors. Everyone had land. Everyone had cattle. Everyone had horses. Uh, my neighbors, the Davises, rodeoed, and they had four kids. And all three of the daughters were rodeo queens, and they were out on the circuit. I thought they were the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life because they were all, you know, about probably... Let's see, Rhonda was the youngest, and I think she was seven years or six years older than me, so pretty cool. All larger than uh, life, they, right? This is larger than life. Oh, yeah, yeah and they would yeah. take me with them to rodeos, and so I was the other the other kid. I was so, I loved horses. My grandfather was a cowboy, and he taught me how to, to train horses, how to break horses. When I was 10, I broke my first horse, Comanche. Wow. And... Wow. Uh, it was just a great way to grow up. We, my mom and dad had a huge garden, so we grew most of our food. And then uh, a lot of the beef and things like that came from neighbors or local people. Um, my dad owned a Western Auto when I was growing up, for, which for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like a Walmart before Walmart. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way I could describe it, right? Yep, yep they absolutely. Had they had bicycles, they had toys, they had tools, they had just anything you could think of. It was a mini Walmart, and I thought it was so cool because everybody in town knew my dad, knew my brothers and sisters. There were eight of us. Mm -hmm. So it was a fun, fun time. I have the best childhood memories growing up with such a large family in such a small town. My siblings were all crazy. All the Reese's are insane. Not you, That's right? Why. Just your siblings. 
Oh no, I'm I'm 100% insane. Anyone who actually knows me, they know. They're like, look, you could never do drugs because we think you would spontaneously combust. Yeah, like be something too much. that happened. Too much personality, <laughs> right? <laughs> the world could not handle you on drugs. Right. So I don't. I don't do drugs. Uh, and like I said, I'm not a big drinker. I don't. I don't need that to be who I am. And. Uh, <laughs> But for instance, my siblings took a tarp and they lined the bed of our truck and they tied it all down and then they filled it with water. And so it was a swimming pool in the back of the truck and then we would drive down our road and they would stop and it would slosh up and slosh back. And, you know, I was real little at the time. So they'd be like, yeah, Pauline, she's going to fall out and grab me. And I'm just laughing, you know, I'm like, oh, I could die. It's awesome. you know, funny because what you're describing <laughs> is memes, right? Those are actual memes nowadays and you live. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah. that was my family. So I love origin <laughs> stories behind artistic people. And yours is very interesting to me because, like, looking back, I like to try to figure out where somebody came from creatively, right? So you grew up in East Texas, and then you were moved to Austin. And Austin is kind of the epicenter for Texas music, and it's like the Texas Nashville in a way. And so looking over your life as a fan, I see a lot of East Texas in your creative process, but I'm curious how much moving to Austin kind of steered you in the direction of music. Well, I always knew what I wanted to be. So when I was a little kid, I had a little gramophone music box and I would practice my Grammy speech. Mm -hmm. And I actually recorded it when I was about five or six years old on cassette, uh, thanking my cat Bubbles, my dog Rummel, my dog Patton, you know, mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters, minus my little brother, unless he's nice that week, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> it's a fun little thing. So I, my mom was the singer. My grandmothers were both singers. My grandfather was... Um, the cowboy, the, he was a welder, a musician for fun. He did not play in public or anything, but he could play anything with strings on it. And then my grandparents on the other side, they were both singers. And, um, my grandmother was a concert pianist and my grandfather played saxophone, big band wow. music. Yeah. So, so I have this there. country influence on one side. Oh, and Hispanic, because my grandmother and grandfather on my mom's side lived in Mexico for many years, lived in Argentina and loved the culture. So they spoke fluent Spanish. Uh, so my grandmother played organ and she just would play these beautiful, beautiful old Spanish songs that were still. I mean, I have some of the records that my grandparents had. I have their record collection that I've been hauling around for years. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, and then I had this city influence and on my dad's side where my grandfather was the CEO of Houston Lighting and Power for 50 something years and played big band and you know, my grandmother playing concert piano and just big golfers. And so it was like city versus country. So I had this, you know, big melting pot of information as far as music was concerned. And we my mom that, was- We call that poly, poly jamorous nowadays. <laughs> poly there you jamorous. go. Yeah. There yeah, you that's, go. That's what my wife calls uh, it. And my mom was the church choir director. So I grew up with a lot of influence there. So when we moved to Austin, it was just like, okay, we're in this city. There's more opportunity. I recognize that. And I told my mom that I wanted to go and take voice lessons and guitar lessons. So she took me to this music door in uh, Round Rock. And the guy who owned the store was the drummer in a band. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was taking voice lessons and he heard me singing and he said, wow, you've got a great voice. And he said, why don't you come and, and audition for our band? And so I did, and I got the part, and I started performing in this band. I mean, it was, a, it, was a God, it was a God thing because, you know, I wouldn't have known at that age 
how to put a band together, how to keep a band together, how to run a band, how to book a band, how to promote a band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it really was God putting this into my lap. I knew what I wanted. It's like I manifested it in a way. But God said, hey, here, this is what you're meant to do. Here's a band. But you recognize, did, you recognize at 10 years old that there was more opportunity in Austin? That's something you already kind of found it out? I was 11, but okay. yeah, I did. It was very depressing to move from having my animals, horses, rodeo, all these things, moving into this tiny little house in the city. Uh, we only lived there for a year. It was just to figure out which, you know, area we wanted to move to. Mm -hmm. But to move into this tiny town and get rid of my horse and all these things, it was awful. It was terrible. But I was like, okay, where's the positive in this? And I just, I saw that a lot more opportunity. We didn't have the voice lessons and guitar lessons and, you know, martial arts and everything mm -hmm. at that time in Pittsburgh, Texas, there was a church choir director that could teach you some piano, you know, that kind of thing. But I was like, wow, this is, this is fancy, you know? So, uh, I did recognize all of that and, and it was certainly something that influenced my life drastically going from the country to the city. It was a culture shock for me.